Hello, everyone. Today, I'm so excited to welcome Phoebe Trotman to the show. Uh, she has just a plethora of wonderful things to share with us today, and I'm really eager to dive in. But before we get there, we're going to have her go ahead and introduce herself in her own way. Thank you so much, Pamela. It is an honor to be here with you. Um, so I am an entrepreneur. I'm based out of Vancouver, Canada. I've kind of learned this term the other day, multipreneur. And I, I definitely wear that hat because I have a few different uh, businesses that I operate under. I am a soccer coach. I run a program for children ages three to seven, which I just absolutely adore. It's a lot of fun and it's just a way to, to connect with the younger generation of players. And then I also have an online business. And then most recently, I uh, published my first book called Never Quit on a Bad Day. So lots of different hats. I love it. And I'm just grateful to be able to be here. That's wonderful. And I love that title of your book, if I haven't told you that already before. <laughs> I really Thank love you. that title. And I'm looking forward to us digging in and talking about that a little bit more as we continue on. So let's jump right in. So Phoebe, tell us about your early life. Uh, did your parents have grit? Was this a trait you saw while you were growing up? And if so, what did it look like? Yeah, my parents are um, incredible role models and definitely displayed a lot of grit, resilience, and just hard work because they were born and raised in Barbados and they moved to the United States um, to go to school. Then they had my brother or to do masters, had my brother there, then moved up to Canada. And so where I was born. And so my parents always worked really hard and taught my brother and I to dream big dreams and to go mm -hmm. after those dreams. And so I actually started off playing soccer at a very young age, uh, mostly because my older brother played. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if it was there weren't any girls teams back then or maybe the team was supposed to be co-ed however I ended up starting off on an all-boys team I was the only person of color little girl on an all-boys team and so that was my first experience playing soccer and I mean they thankfully they just welcomed me with open arms mostly I think because mm -hmm. I was I worked hard and I enjoyed it because I was used to playing with my older brother and then from there I continued on playing did eventually get on a girls team continued playing right up to uh, university and then I went and played one season down in Colorado. And then I played six seasons of professional soccer up here in Vancouver. And so Wonderful. I've had an incredible experience with soccer, a lot of incredible highs, but I've also had some tough stuff happen with, with uh, the sport as well, too. And that's why I always encourage people just to keep going, you know, keep going, dream those dreams and go after them and realize that there will be bumps in the road. But with perseverance and grit, you can you can accomplish those dreams, too. Wow. So what life circumstances brought you to the point of discovering your own resiliency and tenacity? Uh, and tell us a little more, too, about what those bumps in the road regarding soccer was yeah, absolutely. Well, I definitely, I mean, you know, I was, I was a contributing player on my own team and, and doing very well with that. And then I had an opportunity to go out for another team and went out for it, you know, and I think fully expecting that I would make this team. And unfortunately, I didn't. And I remember that so vividly, I was actually playing a different position than I normally do. And I didn't adapt very well to it. I'll, I'll own that. I, you know, I was playing, but it was it kind of stuck in my head, right? And I do remember um, them bringing all the players in and they went through this list of people who would continue on to the next round and they didn't say my name and I would just remember being like wait what and walking back to the car again the car with my dad and just bawling I was absolutely devastated because yeah. it was you know something that initially I never even thought about going out for but everyone's like go 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 for this team you'll totally you know you'll make it and um and then I didn't and it was hard it was really devastating you know and I remember crying for a while and uh, I remember then my parents kind of having that moment that conversation with me like okay well what do you want to do about it like what's done is done um the, the coach made the decision there's not much we can do about it but what can you do what do you want going forward and and I realized that I wanted to continue playing I wanted to play at a high level and I wanted to be an impact player. And so my parents were like, okay, well, what is, what is, what can you control? And really that was that moment of accountability of like, well, what I control is how hard I work going forward. I can control the effort I put in off the field in the sense of, you know, in my backyard, dribbling by myself with the ball, juggling, working on touches, playing with my brother to just get better. And my dad, you know, that I had control over. And so from there, that really was an experience that in looking back on it really defined kind of my career as an athlete, as well as it as an entrepreneur, because I went back and made sure that, you know, going forward, I'm going to be an impact player where coaches are going to be like, we want Phoebe Trotman on the team because I put in the work. Mm. 
That's good stuff. Can you tell me a little bit more though about how those um I'm gonna say characteristics or principles that you learned from being an athlete really transferred over to business? Yeah, well, there's a lot of life skills that you learn as an athlete. You know, if we're talking about just accountability is one, right? When you're transferring into to life, it's like, are you taking, as a business owner, are you taking accountability for the activities that you need to do to get the results that you do, right? So that's one that's huge, you know, commitment and dedication, like setting a goal. And there's going to be a lot of times as an entrepreneur, there's going to be things you don't necessarily want to do or feel like doing. And that happens in life, right? There's going to be times where I don't really feel like going to work out. However, I've committed to a certain lifestyle, I've committed to certain goals, health, physically, that I still go. And so some of those skills, you know, there's a long list of how I could go through, you know, all these different skills that transfer over, but those are some that are top of mind and navigating those bumps in a row as an athlete. You know, I shared one story of not making a team, but there's also times where I didn't get to start a game. I was sitting on the bench and I wanted to play. There were times that I didn't even dress for a soccer game, which means I didn't make that roster of players who were actually dressing. And that even taught me a lesson because that's frustrating. I wanted to play, right? So then what can, again, what can I do accountability to make sure that when I do get that time on the field, I'm going to make that impact. And that's the same over in the business world is when those opportunities present themselves that we all have, are we going to make the most of those opportunities by being prepared in advance for when that door opens and we can step through it? Wonderful. Okay. So you shared a little bit about your challenges and celebrations. So I guess what I'll ask you now is who are you today? And what's brought you to who you are today? Well, who I am today is a person who wants to contribute to help people have, you know, help them have breakthroughs in their life, whatever those look like in terms of just having fulfillment and creating a life of joy. And so um, what brought me here is, you know, having a lot of coaches, teammates, uh, Mm -hmm. mentors, role models who have poured into me and have helped me along my journey and wanting to be able to do the same for other people, because it's so rewarding when, when you have those, you see those breakthroughs in your own life, right? In terms of growth and, and having accomplishments and successes, and you know, where, where you started and you know that people have helped you along the way. I feel like it's just something that I want to be able to contribute to someone else's life because we can see that breakthrough and, and we learn and we grow. And so to be where I am right now, it's a place where I'm just, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the experiences that I've had that have led me to where I am. And I'm grateful for this next kind of chapter and phase, if you will, and just being mm-hmm. also able to continue to grow myself and also help other people um, along that journey. I think that's great because, you know, there's a lot of people who make it or are successful and they don't carry inside of them that passion to help others along the way. Mm-hmm. So um, I applaud you with that. And that's certainly what I am uh, endeavoring to do, even with this podcast. So Um, Together with this episode, hopefully we are providing information that will inspire others and help them along the way. I know that we're going to reach a point where you'll be able to tell them a little bit more about what you do and even how to be in touch with you to get more Mm. services. So why do you aspire to give back in the way that you do? And what led to your book, Never Quit? on a bad day. I think you've already touched on the first part of that. So if there's more you have to say about it, go ahead. If not, let's just dive right into what led to the book. And yeah, absolutely. Again, I love that title. Thank <laughs> you. On a Thank bad day. you. Yeah, you know, it was well. It's been on my heart to to create something to help, inspire, encourage, and that's been on my heart for several years. Yeah, now I just wasn't sure what that looked like. And some friends of mine, actually, about a year ago, I was with them, and they're the ones who suggested to write a book. And at first, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. What you know, I've had people suggest it over the years. However, you know, they kind of phrased it in a way, well, think of all the people that you can help and inspire through writing a book. And I love to read. And so I was open to the idea. And then I started like kind of simmering on it a little bit because I knew if I was going to write a book, it had to do two things, had to help and encourage. And I also had to feel passionate 
about what I was creating. And the month before I had an incredible honor, I was being inducted into the Coquitlam Sports Hall of Fame. And oh. there was an interview. Yeah, it was an re- incredible, incredible moment. And uh, there was an interview. And in that interview, the question came up, what has sport given me? And I shared some of the things we talked about today. And I also really highlighted as much, there's so many highs in sport. Like I've had national championships on all levels and personal accolades and incredible highlights. And I said, the only reason I've been able to have those highlights is the tough stuff. Mm -hmm. And so when I was simmering on the book theme, then I realized that's what I wanted to, to highlight a book about like the story behind the story, because we often see, you know, people see all these awards and hall of fame and all these different things. And it's like, yeah, but I don't always talk about not making that team like I shared today or the Mm. first time I got a red card and had to like was kicked out of a game and that was on me. And, you know, so many different things that weren't great experiences. However, they really were because they set me up for this. And so um, once I once I sat with that a little bit, then I was like, that's what I want to share the story behind the story so that people know they're not alone in those struggles. We all have them. Even our struggles might be different, but there'll be parallels in terms of the lessons we can learn and how we can push through those with different um, strategies, ideas, suggestions, and and things that people have done to be able to push through them. And so I got excited about it. And then the saying, never quit on a bad day has always been, I heard it years ago, and it's just stuck with me. And so I was like, that'd be a great name for a title of a book. And so here we are. Do you remember where you heard it? I don't, I've heard, I heard it a long time ago. And so it's just, it's a saying that, you know, some people it's interesting have never heard of it before. And then there's some people that were like, yeah, oh, I love that saying. And I'm like, yeah, it's a powerful one. And so um, I'm excited about getting it out to more people because when people truly sit with that saying, never quit on a bad day, when people truly apply that to their life, Mm. it's incredible what you'll be able to accomplish in terms of your goals. I'm one of those people. I've never heard of that title. Mm -hmm. Um, that saying rather. Uh, But when I think of it, it brings a lot of things to mind that I am familiar with. Um, So if we think about never quit on a bad day, one of the things I say often is never make an important decision when you have some type of heightened emotion. Mm -hmm. It makes me think of stuff like that. Even if you're super happy or super sad or super depressed, anything where it's just very heightened, don't make an important decision in that moment. (laughs) Yeah, that's smart. That's really smart. Because that's, that's very, it's very similar to the saying, right? As you said, like, that's very, it's the same concept. It's so important. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, a bad day is the wrong time to make a decision about whether or not I continue with this company or close the company or continue pursuing a dream of sports or whatever the case may be, even Mm -hmm. um, losing weight or whatever. (laughs) You can make a mistake and, oh, I wasn't supposed to eat that cake, but you did. But don't quit. It's a bad day, but don't quit. Stay focused Mm -hmm. on the goal. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes you do have to do that, right? You have to just pause and go, okay, we all have bad days, moments, seasons, what can you do to push through that and get to the other side? Because that's where that growth happens. And then when you're on the other side, that's the time when you make a decision, whatever that decision may be, because we're not saying never quit something. There's times to transition. There's times to move forward. However, do it on a time where, yeah, you have a level head, you're not that heightened emotion as you talked about. Yeah. A clear mind. So, um, a lots of people have endeavored to teach people, about these kinds of principles. What makes your book unique? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things um, I love to like train and help and some of the books that I've connected with that that I absolutely love have left, have made me think about my own life. And so one of the things with this book is it is a collection of short stories. It's a book that you can read cover to cover, or you can flip open to a chapter and just read that chapter on its own. And the chapter will have shorts, a short story by a contributor. And then at the end of every chapter, I've written a section called reflections on resilience. And 
that is kind of a work page for the reader to dig into their own life, because I truly believe we're all very resilient. Sometimes we just don't remember the, some of the stuff we've gone through to get to where we are. Sometimes we don't remember what are some of the goals and dreams that we want for a life that light us up, that bring us joy. And so every chapter, there is that section reflections on resilience, where you can grab a pen and, and you have the, the chapter page right there that you're, it's for the reader to fill out the other. So it, people will leave the book, not just feeling inspired reading someone else's story, but they're going to feel inspired about their own life because they've had that chance to kind of dig deep. The other thing that's unique about the book is at the end of every chapter, there is a QR code that a reader can scan with their phone and a video will pop up and it's a video from the contributor. It's not the contributor telling their own, the same story. It's the contributor just sharing something from their heart. So I gave everyone a chance to just, you know, what's something you want the reader to have in this moment. And so they, they're very different. Some of them are additional teaching points. Some of them are an exercise you can do. Some of them are just in words of encouragement. So it's a unique experience that the book really comes to life with those QR codes, with the workbook, the reflections on resilience, and then those short stories as well, too. That does sound very unique. I'm glad I asked that question. <laughs> mm-hmm. So what is one activity or exercise that has helped you grow on your journey to create a life you love? Yeah, absolutely. And I do share this. This is actually one of the things that I shared in my reflection or my uh, video of encouragement at the end of my chapter. And it's an activity that I've called your dream day. And I went through this exercise similar to this many, many years ago. And it was kind of a shorter version of it. But the gist of it is to get a notepad, a pen and paper or a journal. I have a workbook as well that I've created. So you can get that, or you can just do the short version, whichever helps, you know, the listeners. And, and one of the things that's behind this dream day is to, what does a dream day look like for you from the moment you open your eyes to the moment you close them? How do you feel? What activities do you enjoy? Who do you enjoy it with? How do you feel physically, mm-hmm. emotionally, spiritually, socially, financially, and really dig deep and write it in the present tense. And I remember the first time I went through this activity, I wasn't anywhere close to living my dream day (laughs) at all. And I had to stretch a lot, but it was so powerful because it gave me something to look forward to. It gave me something to work towards. And I've done this activity over and over again, over the years, I've again, enhanced it by adding a lot to it to really have that time to think of what that looks like. And one of the reasons I find it so powerful is because I use it like a lighthouse and on the cover of the workbook, it, it is a picture of a lighthouse because when we're going through those challenging times or when I'm going through those challenging times, I think about that dream day. And I think about it and it gives me clarity. It gives me that purpose, that reminder of this is why I'm working through this. This is what I'm working towards. And so I found it to be extremely useful and I encourage everybody to do it. Just take some time. Again, you can get the workbook or you can get a journal and just write. And the key really those to feel those emotions and make sure you write it in the present tense. Wow. Okay. Very good stuff. Um, what are some of the challenges you faced as an entrepreneur? Oh, I faced a lot in the beginning. (laughs) And I think mostly because I had, when I started off as an entrepreneur, it was mostly on the side. I was working a full-time job. I was doing these projects on the side. And I, in my mind, I had planned to build these businesses on the side up till the income was high enough. And then I just, you know, hand in my letter of resignation and transition over. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't quite work out like that because uh, the company ended up going bankrupt and I was laid off. And so in that moment, it was like, okay, well, what next? Like, do I go back to schools and get a master's? Do I want to work on this business or coach full time or, you know, and um, I had started my online business probably about six months before that. And so I wasn't really in it, in it. And, you know, when I looked forward though, I said, and I, and I had that time and those range of emotions that you go through, but I, I kind of went, well, what do I want my life to look like? And I knew I wanted control. And so I decided to, I'm going to be an entrepreneur full time. And so, you know, when you go from that structured environment of a job to yeah. entrepreneur life in the beginning, it, I would work one day, I'd take a couple of days off because I felt like it and then work again. And, you know, so I had a lot of bumps in the road in the sense that I didn't have the success that I wanted, but it was because I wasn't putting in the work. Right. And when I had that same accountability talk with myself that I've had as an athlete, Mm -hmm. then I realized, well, if I want consistent results, I have to have consistent activity. And so from that, I learned a lot 
got a mentor plugged into a system and then really started seeing more of those consistent results because I was doing that consistent work. Um, But it was tough because there's moments where you want your business to go faster than it is. You know, you're dealing with other people, you want them to do what this, but it doesn't align. And so you really have to, um, there's a lot of patience in being an entrepreneur. There's a lot of time management that you have to have. And then you really just have to focus on the, the activity because that's what you have control over. You don't always have control over the results, but you have control over the activities and what you do. Mm-hmm. So was your mentor uh, someone in your exact field or just an entrepreneur overall? That was someone in my in my company. Yeah. So I've been really fortunate to be able to find mentors within the same space that I'm in. I've also had, you know, when I say this to a lot of people, I've, I'm, I've had mentors that have worked closely with me and I've had mentors who don't even know I exist. And what I mean by that is through their books or through their workshops or conferences or YouTube. Like we're so fortunate that there's so much information out there that we can plug into. And so um, I've had a lot of mentors who, yeah, they don't even necessarily know how much they've impacted me but they have because I've wow. leaned into that that information that they've provided how did you deal with the whole marketing aspect that's something people wrestle with a lot marketing so I did a lot of networking so in the sense of you know getting out there attending events meeting people you know I was I was part of networking a group so I really learned because I was going from an an athlete. I studied kinesiology. I didn't really have a business sense, if you will. And so I got around business owners and learned from them in terms of like systems and marketing and and what does that look like? And a lot of that happened through networking, going to events and really learning what does it mean to, um, to connect with people and not go with the idea of, I just want to sell them something, but go and be like, how can I help them? Because when you can come with a servant heart first and look to help and give, it naturally comes back to you in other ways. And so that was really a a big lesson that I learned as well too. And then in terms of, you know, when you're networking and you're connecting and you're looking to help, well, people naturally want to help you as well too. And then when you have that relationship and you've poured into that relationship, then that's a time where you might, you know, I asked a lot of people, again, once I've given, then I felt like I could ask and just say something like, hey, Pamela, you know, I'm looking to expand my business. Is there anyone that you know who's looking for what I have that you might be able to connect me with? And that's a way that I, it was a lot of word of mouth for me, definitely in terms of um, the beginning stages. And then from there, then starting to do stuff on social media and just continuing to network online and offline. Very good. Okay. So um, what do you know that can be a bridge to help someone get to their next level of best regarding this topic? So I think really important is to know where someone's starting from, right? It's it's important to know where you're starting from and where do you want to go? Because everyone has different level and definitions of success, right? What success for someone is going to be different than success for someone else. And so that's one thing that I always encourage people is like, what does success look like for you, mm-hmm. right? Because if you don't know what you're looking to achieve, how are you going to go after it, right? And so- How will you want... know when you get there? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so I've done a lot of growth in terms of that. Because for me, like what's really important to me is having a lot of time to be present for my friends and family. And so, you know, I've I've shifted in terms of some of the things that in my mind, success looked like five years ago is different than what it is right now. So I encourage people, number one, think of that, like what does success look like for you? And then how can you get there really depends on, again, what where is there, right? That's one thing. But one of the things that I know was helpful for me is finding gratitude along that way, because there are going to be times, and especially when I was frustrated with my business, is I had to figure out what can I be grateful for? Because gratitude, it's something you hear people talk about all the time, but it, it will change your, it changes everything for you because it shifts your perspective. It gives you a chance to have clarity to figure out, you know, just that moment of like when you're grateful for something, um, it, it's, it's very hard for you to be grateful and angry at the same time. So <laughs> gratitude will win. And so I just encourage people and something I did very early on easy that people can do is I have a, a calendar in or um, meeting in with my, in my phone for, with myself every 
single day at 9, 10 p.m. It goes off and it just says, I am so happy and grateful that. And I set that up many, many years ago and I still have it, even though gratitude is just part of my life because it forces me to pause and to go, yeah, what am I grateful for right now? So I encourage people to do that because that can be a bridge because then you'll realize like, what are you grateful for and how do you have more of that in your life or more of that experience or people or, or um, yeah, experiences that you have. Right. So there's a question that I ask every single guest. And so while we've had this wonderful conversation and lots of inspiring things have been shared, informative uh, dialogue that we've had here, what's the one gem? If everyone forgets everything we've talked about, you say, no, no, people, but please hold on to this one. Figure out what success looks like for you. What is that? What lights your fire? What brings you joy? Figure that out because when you figure that out, it, it's so freeing because now you know what you look to create and you can go after it. And keep in mind, success is your definition of success. No one else's. And uh, I just encourage people to figure that out because when you do, it's very freeing and very powerful. Mm-hmm. I'd agree because I think sometimes we have success dictated to us. Mm -hmm. So we're reaching for actually what society says success is or what some popular or famous influencer or person says success looks like, but that's success for them. I think um, what we have to plug into is what makes us happy. Mm -hmm. What gifts do we already have that when we give it to the world, we're excited and passionate. Um, And Are we content with a middle-class lifestyle as long as you can go on, you know, a vacation or two and you can take care of yourself? Does your car have to be a Rolls Royce or are you completely okay with a Toyota 4Runner or whatever the case may be? What does it look like to you? And if you're okay with it, having the peace of mind to do you and not compare yourself to people who are doing this other thing. And even though they're doing this other thing and it looks very successful, they may be drowning inside. They may have all these achievements, but they're still unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. boy, there's a lot in what you said too about having time for friends and family. Do you really want your life sucked up and being a workaholic? Or do you want a little more balance? And to get that balance, you're okay with not driving the Rolls Royce. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's a lot of food for thought. And I really think that we should teach more of those concepts in like, you know, high school, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, maybe even junior high school, help people kind of get grounded because so much is coming at people through social media um, that you can lose sight of what's important to you or you don't even have a chance to discover what's really most important to you. So thank you for that. We are at the point where I just would love for you to share with the audience um, how can they stay connected with you? How can they get their book? Anything you want to share with them about how they can be connected with you, go for it here. Yeah, absolutely. So on my website, neverquitonabadday.com, you're everyone's more than welcome to check it out. You can enter your email, you get a free chapter from the book. And I chose this chapter specifically because it's all about belief and the words that we use. And because there's so much power in what we say and are our words helping us move towards our goals and dreams or is it limiting us? So I encourage everybody to check out the website, neverquitonabadday.com, get that free chapter. From there, you can learn more about me. We're also on social media. So never quit on a bad day, Instagram, Facebook, and then the book is available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, kind of online retailers as well, too. And so uh, it's been there's been incredible feedback. And I'm just excited that the book is helping people. That was the goal of it. And and it's really helping a lot of people. And I'd love to hear from people how it's how it's improving and impacting them with their life as well, too. Love it. And I just want to encourage everyone to especially if something really jumped out at you during this conversation you want to know more about Phoebe, you want to know more about what she's doing, 
go ahead out there, get her book, uh, learn more and um, start changing your life and, and figuring out what it is you really want. OK, so again, thanks so much, Phoebe, for being on the show. So glad you came. Thanks so much for having me. An absolute pleasure. And just keep doing what you're doing to inspire and encourage and uplift. Oh, thank you.